Hello and welcome to Spirit of Nature Art and episode three of the Enchanted Garden using the beautiful artwork gifted to me by Rachel Tribble Art from Florida. So this is what we got to last time. We had made the structure of the altered book, that book thing. Um, and we've also made these dragonfly pockets. And you know what, if you want to uh, craft along with me, Rachel has put together an amazing kit in her Etsy shop, um, where you'll be able to find all of the cards that I'm using in these first two episodes. And if you enter Spirit of Nature Art at the checkout, you will get 15% off. So thank you, Rachel. Okay, so now for the back page, the bit that's going to sit behind the pockets. Um, I kind of wanted to get this sense of there being a wildflower meadow because of course you've got all those beautiful dragonflies flying around. So I have taken some more of Rachel's lovely cards. So I've taken another dragonfly. I've taken these beautiful little purple like violets. I, oh my gosh, I love these ones. These are fantastic and these beautiful, they kind of feel like tulips. And I have cut them out. So, whoops, move these out of the way. So I have cut these out and I have done the embossing around the edge on them. So you can see what I've been doing here. Uh, so these are gonna kind of form part of this page and I also wanted just to carry through the same kind of theme that we've got on those dragonfly pockets so I've taken some more of the dictionary page and a piece of the actual original book <laughs> that uh, that we gutted for this so I've done exactly the same as I did on the back of the dragonfly pockets and I've just layered that up torn it and layered it up so that the idea is it will go together something like, I wanted these to be kind of different heights, something like this. Um, and I've got some kind of text stamps here that I wanted to just kind of play around with and just add a little bit of kind of texture in the background. I kind of feel there needs to be something down the bottom here. So uh, I need to decide what that is going to be. So I am just gonna play around with this a little bit um, until I am happy. So I'll just put the music on um, and we will have a little play. Thank you. 
So before I start adding all of the elements to this page, I want to just get a little bit of texture in the background. So I'm using one of Paper Artsy's mini stamps, just a um, small uh, script stamp, uh, and just adding on that with some uh, tea dye oxide in the background. And I will build on that as we, as we go along. Uh, I love these little uh, mini stamps from Paper Artsy. They're just so fun to use. So now it's about putting everything together. So this is the back page of the book. So this is where I sort of pulled it all apart. So there's a few little bits that I want to just kind of stick down into place because I'm gonna be sticking things onto that. So I want to make sure that everything's as kind of secure as possible before I start to add this page. Now, I purposely made sure this piece of tea dye paper was bigger than the piece um, of work that we're gonna do on that back page there so that it will overhang. Remember I said when we make this, um, uh, the kind of extensions using the book binding tape there, that not to worry because you won't see any of that at the end. So we want to start covering that up. So you can see I've taken my glue over onto that book binding tape and I'm just going to start to place that piece of tea dye paper. This is my own tea dye paper. I literally just get like an oven dish and put some tea bags in it and some hot water and a little bit of bicarb of soda. And then I just you know, put loads of sheets of paper in it for a few hours, let them soak and then take them out and put them in the, uh, the kind of laundry drying cupboard <laughs> or in the greenhouse in the summer. Um, so that I've got a stack to be able to use. So I'm just using my high tack glue here. I probably should have used a bigger bottle because I'm doing such a big space, um, but this was what I had to hand. Um, and just getting this page down ready to start to build all of these lovely elements on top. And again, I want this piece of paper to go underneath where the central spine is gonna go so that you kind of, you're not seeing all these kind of joins. So again, I made sure this page was a bit wider on that side as well. And just really pushing it into where the folds are going to be. And just grabbing a piece of scrap paper there and using my brayer just to go over the top of it. Um, I didn't want, I have no idea what's on this brayer, so I just wanted to put a bit of scrap on just to make sure I didn't transfer any color. And then yeah, again, just really pressing in to those areas. Now, do you remember I said not to throw away any of the little scraps that you cut away? Well, this is my little collection that I have gathered over this project so far. And I'm bringing out some botanical dyes here that I can just run through my die cutting machine, using up all these beautiful kind of background areas uh, from Rachel's cards. Uh, so that I can just create a little bit more to put down in that bottom area of the page really to get this kind of lovely wildflower meadow feeling going on. So I'm just choosing uh, some pieces that fit on those scraps and the colours that I think will kind of go with the cards as well and just kind of playing around with the placement of all of those so that I can start to kind of see how it's all going to come together. And I am loving how this is looking. <laughs> Now I am not going to do the embossing around the edge of all of these teeny tiny bits that would just be, A, it would be too fiddly, but also I don't think it would look very good. So I was just adding a little bit of uh, distress ink around the edge to get rid of that whiteness. And now whilst uh, that back page is drying, I wanna sort out the spine. So I'm just taking some of that dictionary page and um, my glue stick, and uh, I'm just gonna stick those pages on. I don't, I'm not, we're not gonna see this, You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So it doesn't matter that this is wonky. I'm very aware that it's wonky. But I just want to get something on here that I can then fold around the edges so that the edges have got a nice finish to them. So what I'm gonna do now is get my high tack glue and just run a bead of glue along that edge. And then I am going to just really kind of make sure I'm folding that really so it's molding around that edge there because it's that bit of edge is really going to be the only bit that we are going to even well we probably won't even notice but I just want that to be finished off nicely so I folded it all around and I'm just going to miter the edges edges here so that I can tuck the ends in nice and neatly as well And 
then just distressing around the edge. So I've used vintage photo first and now just going in with a little bit of ground espresso so that really kind of stands out. And this beautiful ribbon, oh my gosh, I found this ribbon completely by chance in a shop called Dunelm here in the UK. Um, and I couldn't resist. <laughs> so um, what I want to do is, is use that to create the spine. So it's not it's, it's the exact width of the spine. So that's why I've put the dictionary pages on the spine first to give the edge a nice look. So I can just stick this down on top now and the edges are already nicely finished without me trying to kind of fold it over where there's, no, there's not enough stuff to fold. So I'm just going to take that glue right the way up to the edge there so that this is going to kind of stick down really nicely on the spine. Not only does it look wonderful, but it's going to give it another element of reinforcement as well. Again, just making sure that bead of glue goes along that kind of edge there so that I can really make sure that that sticks nicely. Don't want that getting baggy around the, the bottom there. No one wants a baggy bottom. And again, just doing the same with the Distress Inks, Vintage Photo and then a little bit of Ground Espresso. And then just offering that up. How cool does that look? I love it. It's like Tim Holtz has been in and done something, but I, it's really bizarre. Don Elm in the UK is just a completely kind of like just a homeware shop. So to find that in there was quite amazing. So now I want to make some wonderful tags to go in the butterfly pockets. So these are more cards from Rachel. These beautiful trees, I love them. I love the swirls and I love the trees. Uh, if you've watched any of my projects before in the past, you'll notice that trees and swirls are there an awful lot. So I'm just kind of measuring, well, I'm not measuring this up. You can see what I'm doing. I'm sizing it up and then just using my trimmer to cut it so that it just it fits perfectly inside that tag. I don't want it sticking out. Um, don't get rid of any of the bits that you've cut off. You've already seen that I'm <laughs> gonna reuse them, but this piece here is perfect for a tag. So um, I'm not sure where I'm gonna use it yet, but it is definitely crying out to be a tag. So I'm just trimming the corner off and then I might as well use that corner as the template for the big tags as well so that everything matches. So just trimming that and then putting it back on the other side so that all of the little tag corners are exactly the same. And now what I want to do is to start to cut away some of these elements so we can create some really fun little additional journaling spots. I love this hole under the tree here. It's like a, it's like a portal to another realm. Um, and I just really wanted that. It just feels like there's a perfect place to put perhaps a word or, or something um, to inspire you when you're doing your journaling. So I'm going to cut that space out. And I'm also going to cut out the other kind of darker background areas as well. So there's that bit. And then just following the line of the trunk. And it just so happened, just like there was four dragonflies in Rachel's cards, there's four trees. And so it means I'll be able to create four tags to go in the four pockets, which is wonderful. And now I want to fussy cut around the leaves there. So um, I, I want to kind of give it that follow the line of the leaves. So it's easier to do that with my, uh, my little scissors rather than trying to do that with the craft knife. A 
and what I'm going to do with the uh, with the tree here that I don't think I've got the video for I think I must have edited that bit out is I'm going to do the gold embossing uh, on here as well just like I did with the dragonflies so I'm going to go around with my embossing pen and emboss all of that line that I've just cut out with the leaves um, and uh, all the way down the, uh, the trunk and around that circle as well so all the places I've cut are going to get that line of gold embossing which we'll see in a minute so you can start to see what the card is going to look like with the tea dye paper underneath but I also want to uh, this is a tag so it needs to be a little bit firmer especially because I've cut some of those areas away so this is just a bit of craft card stock here and just cutting around the lines that I've drawn there just to create a backing for that tree to sit on trimming off those corners to make the tag shape so that the tree goes on like this. So here we go, I've added the tea dye paper to the tag. I have embossed around all of those fussy cut lines that I have done and I am just going to use my high tack glue here just to stick this on to the tag. Paying particular attention to those edges and then just trimming off any little excess bits and now I want to turn this into a tag so I am going to get my crocodile and pop in an eyelet before I do, I just want to make sure that I, I want that eyelet to sit right in that little nook there. So just making sure I've got my mark in the right place. There we go. And I've chosen gold, of course, so that it matches with all of the embossing. And now that all the edges are exact and precise, I'm gonna carry on that gold embossing around those outside edges as well. These are always gonna be easier because they are straight. So just using my embossing ink pad and then going in with that wonderful gold embossing powder just to make sure that all of the edges of that tree have had the same treatment. Now just to match with the pockets, I am using a little bit of that sari ribbon, but I'm going to keep this, this as the natural colour rather than dyeing it, just so it stands out from the dyed pieces of sari ribbon that are on the dragonfly pockets themselves. And there we go. Pops in. Lovely, just like that. That's exactly how I wanted it, so that you can actually see the card you could just see the ribbon popping out the top, like so. And I love how the gold embossing echoes what's on the pocket as well. And as I said, there are four slightly different cards. So here's another one that I've done and you'll see the other two as we get to the end of the project. But again, exactly the same thing, uh, cut out and then gold embossed created a card tag, added the tea dye paper, put in an eyelet and then a little bit of sari ribbon so that they all match. And now I just want to get these pockets ready to adhere to the back page because it will be time to do that very soon. So I'm just using some double sided tape for this. I've got the exact kind of width which is quite handy and just using my ruler there to tear it off so that I can get that as Kind of straight into the edge as, as possible and giving that a good burnish so it's nice and secure and 
you also spot that I gave the same treatment with the uh, dictionary paper on the back of them as well. So I'm just taking uh, my distress ink and just quickly rubbing it along where those folds are so that I can see where they are so I can line up my pockets better, but also adds a bit of distressing. I know I've got sticky tape on there and I know I've just added more glue, um, but what that glue does is it just gives me a bit of wiggle time. If I just put the, the sticky tape straight down, that's it, it's stuck. If I add that glue, it just gives me a little bit of wiggle time before everything sets firm. So it gives me some time to line everything up. Here we go. So our lovely dragonfly pockets all in place and now it's time for us to put together all of these elements so the two pieces at the side with the dictionary paper and the paper from the uh, original book all of the pieces that i have fussy cut out of rachel's card and gold embossed around so the big flowers and the dragonflies um, and then all these extra little elements that i die cut out of the leftover pieces so just adding all of that together to create this kind of beautiful wildflower meadow that is sat there behind all of those wonderful dragonfly pockets. I like things to overlap and kind of sit on top of each other or go underneath each other. It just kind of creates that sense of depth and makes it feel more real. So here is the finished page. I am so excited. Look how chunky that looks. I'm pleased we put these extra um, uh, spines on to give us the space to be able to have a project like this. I haven't fitted the spine in yet because I do still have some things to do that will need to sit behind that. So here are those four beautiful dragonfly cards that were turned into the pockets beautiful journaling spaces on the back and then this wonderful wildflower meadow just sat behind. I love how this has turned out and I love all the little journaling cards. These trees, are, the, the trees are just so beautiful, so much detail on them and the kind of spirals and twists and turns in them are lovely. And I love that the cutout bits where you can add more journaling, so perhaps a little affirmation or a quote or something on the front there in those little gaps where the trees have been cut out as well as them journaling more on the back. So the page on the right here where the tags are going is the one I'm going to be working on next. I've got a few ideas as to how that is going to come out but as usual I just kind of start with one key element uh, and we see how it goes. So for now here are the beautiful dragonflies, these wonderful pockets, they're the beautiful journaling spaces on the back and inside with the tags and also this wonderful center spread. I love how it's all come out. I hope you've enjoyed it and do come back soon for another episode of the Enchanted Garden and thank you again to the wonderful amazing Rachel Tribble for providing all this beautiful art for me to cut up and use. I'll see you soon.